Actress. I was on Carson when I was seven. Producer. I really went to school to be a producer. I put together writer's list. I want to make it happen. Entrepreneur. It's from our family to yours. Mom. I'm like a cat who has had several lives. Now I'm like a stay-at-home mom. From her family to ours, Drew Barrymore puts it all on the table. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so happy you're here. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And I brought you a present, actually. You brought me a present. I certainly oh, did. That's brought very nice. Two. Two. Yeah, because one is never enough. This is your wine. Pinot Grigio. You produce the wine? I do. Let's try and cheer. Oh, I'm Absolutely. excited for you to taste it. I'm very excited. It. Well, cheers to the wine and to you. And thank you so much for being on the set. I mean, cheers to you, Eric. Let's see. <laughs> I wanted to create Barrymore Wines because I've always drank Pinot Grigio with my friends and I love um, the communal nature of that, the tradition that me and my friends and now my actual family have had, which is to feel like a family. This is my grandfather's crest on the label. I went and found it in the archives. That's really nice. From and, and John you're... Barrymore. Wow. A so your grandfather cool was an cat. actor too, right? Yes, he was. And a big drinker. <laughs> okay, well, listen, he must be happy from there to be on the bottle, I guess. So Drew is a legend in Hollywood and uh, she has done so many movies. I didn't know what to expect and uh, Drew that came today was a very warm, down-to-earth uh, person. I have a little surprise for you. I, wanted, I want to do a test with you about this wine. Depending on the glass, the wine completely changed flavor. Eric um, opened my eyes in the most profound way because he took different glasses, everything from a wide wine glass to a thinner, more cylindrical wine glass to a styrofoam cup. And with each different glass, the wine completely tasted different. And it's the most refined. You're absolutely right. No kidding, no fooling on any level. This is the most balanced it's tasted. It's, it's, it's amazing. So if you go back to that, now you're not going to be happy. Wow. It is like, it's, on, I mean, it's the most bitter. Pr probably because also the, the plastic cup. I'm not above a styrofoam <laughs> cup, unfortunately. But I, I'm happy that you, you experimented and agree with, with my conclusions. I agree with your conclusions too. Lesson number one, Eric. Well, let's, let's move on and let's cook. We're going to have quality time cooking too. So we are going to cook a recipe of yours. Yes. And you decided to cook clams. We're going to work on a dish called Clams Montecito, which is dear to my heart. And he's going to teach me um, how to go back to my friends and family and uh, maybe bring some new impressive stuff to show them. My friends and I call this dish Clams Montecito. Um, because you have a house, in, in, I guess, in Montecito? I do. And you cook a lot with your friends? We cook a lot, and um, so we like to crack open a bottle of wine. Sure. And then break out a bunch of yummy manila clams. So when did you really start? I mean, are you into cooking? Or you? So much so. Very much. And I had to learn because as soon as I found out or thought about becoming a mother, I wanted... Congratulations, Thank it just you happened, so much. right? Four months ago. Yes, fantastic. A little olive. It's, and she is an olive. Like if I had named her some very fancy girly name, it would Did you wait for the her. last minute to choose the name or you had the name in mind already? I knew it at three months because we were looking through um, a, a book about pregnancy. It always compared the size of the baby to a food item. So like at one point your baby is a banana, which confused me the most because I thought, uh, is that length? Yeah, that can't right. be width. What's why the banana? And this was a good book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It made me hungry every time yeah. I read it. At one point we had just found out uh, that it was a girl and it said, your baby is the size of an olive. And I was and like, that was it. cheers. Done. Well, cheers done. to that. That's a special moment too. What inspires my cooking is my daughter because I want to be able to throw things together for her in an effortless fashion because I'm still at the stage when I'm cooking, there's like flames going off behind me and like alarms and I'm nervous and I'm not sexy. So I hope by the time that she's ready to eat my food that I make it look like, sure honey, you want this? 
You got it. You know what I'd love to do? Yes. I would love to go back and impress my girlfriends. Sure. Um, with um, some tips that you've taught me or some new guidance on a dish that we've been making for years. I really wanted to ask him some questions. If you get to be with someone that you respect so much, you want to say, hey, would you do this? Would you not do that? What would you do here? And uh, he not only made it fun, but he taught me things. So we have few ingredients, I mean, in this recipe, and I, I like that because it's simple. Obviously, the clams have to be very fresh. If they start to open, when you touch them, they close. You see those? They're moving everywhere in the bowl. Oh so, my god. Um, so they haven't been in a store for a long time, and it's not like you're going to have something old. and they're very, Dried very, out. Yeah, exactly. Very you fresh. You don't want old and dried out. No. No. <laughs> in, in, in no nowhere. <laughs> um, so then we have jalapenos and, and garlic, I think, for the recipe. Yeah. So you started at a very, very, very young age acting. Yeah. Because of, of your family being uh, in Hollywood, they were all, I mean, your mom and your dad and, and your grandfather. Your yeah. grandmother too was a, an actor? Yes, Dolores Costello. Um, so everybody was in movies. Yeah. And then after, I mean, I think you became like very, very famous worldwide in, in your role with E.T. Yes, that changed everything. I was six when we filmed it and seven when it came when out. When it came out. Yeah. When you were so young, I mean, six years old, you have to remember lines. Yeah. You have to, how difficult is that? Or how easy is it? I mean, I, mean, I loved it. I was very gung-ho about it. So how did you uh, remember your lines? Because I cannot say five words. <laughs> it, I mean, it's like, it takes me hours to remember. And then the camera goes on and I'm like, uh, <laughs> so how do, how do you do that? I mean, I did word association. Like the C comes before S in the alphabet, so it'd be the word cat first and the word saw next because C that, and that S makes it even more complicated <laughs> for me. Let's let's start to cook because I'm like it's already hard <laughs> with my way, which is absolutely not recommendable. So uh, choose your weapon, if I may. I'm going this guy. Okay. So to slice. I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you my technique, then you do it the way you want. You want it uh, thinly sliced or... Yeah, I think Thinly thin. sliced. The thinnest... It also looks nice. Tell me nice, if like, like that is good for you. Yeah, that's gorgeous. This is good? Okay, so we How go. would you do an even thinner one out of curiosity? Oh, uh, you go like that. You see, like, your, your finger is going to guide the blade, and then you go like that. But that's a technique, I mean, it, uh, you know, like, I was talking about the, the learning your lines, and cooking is learning your knife skills. It's the same. When you have it, you never lose it. It's, it's forever. Now, uh, after ET, so it was a huge success, and, I mean, you go to school at the same time. I did. And, and I went to school. And you can do movies, and, and I mean, it, how, how the, it's difficult, right? It was really hard. I wasn't, you know, popular in school either, and, and I was... But I, you were going to the regular program? Yeah. Yes, oh, I, I would, but I was in and out of school all the time because I'd be on a set and then I'd come back. Oh, that's and tough. It's, I think it's it, difficult. I think it didn't help me bond with anybody. You were hanging with uh, adults and, and a lot because you were shooting movies with yeah. actors and so on. And then some <laughs> of them, I mean, had a bad influence, I guess, at one point on, on your lifestyle. Yeah, but I had fun. Like, I got to go to Studio 54 and, like, Studio see 54. the death of disco. So I'm not... You know, it's not how I would ever raise my kid, but I'll never regret the experiences I of, had. Of, of the wild side, I Yeah, guess, right? yeah. I've had 17 different lives. I'm like a cat who has had several lives. And, you know, now I'm like a stay-at-home mom and, you know, kind of subdued. But you kind of find yourself along the way. And I've had these incredible crash courses on radically different lives. And I now know, as like a 38-year-old woman, which one I would choose. Sometimes you learn the hard way, I guess, and sometimes it's, it's easy. Oh, and, nobody uh, gets a free ride. Every day I ask myself, like, what did I learn today? You're very tough on yourself. I am very tough right? on myself, I mean, Eric. Like, whoa, my God. Very hard on myself. Uh, but you know what? I'm obsessed with the Abe Lincoln quote right now. If I do good, I feel good. If I do bad, I feel bad. That is my religion. I keep writing yeah. it down lately because it, it's so succinct and perfect. So going back to our jalapeno, what do we do to him? I'll show you the way that okay. we normally do it.
are you moody sometimes when you go on the, on the set? I think I'm moody because I'm a woman and I can ask any man in this really? room. Like, you know, women are just inherently like moody or hormonal people. It's, I don't know how men deal with it. I, I praise them. Well, <laughs> see that white hair? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it's you got it? either by the kitchen or I don't know. Which movie did you do with Woody Allen? It was called Everyone Says I Love You. And it was oh. a musical. But I actually lip synced because I couldn't sing and I was too afraid and he, you know, is notorious for replacing people who aren't oh, sort of no, right I don't, I don't know. for things um, because he has a vision and he wants to see it through. And, and he let me lip sync. And then I ended up singing for like the next five films I did. I think I was so mad at myself for not figuring out how to do it that I figured out how to sing in the future because I, ah, I didn't want to cool. go out that way. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I think it's good to be a complete artist. We made Clams Montecito, um, which is, you know, a very traditional rustic clams made with butter and white wine and garlic and some jalapeno for a good kick. So we have the clams, the garlic, the jalapeno. Are we putting the garlic now and the jalapenos now? Yes, when the butter okay. is warmed. So I'm going to put absolutely. it here. Absolutely. Jalapeno too? Yes. With it, okay. Absolutely. Excellent. So we go. Here. And then I have a question for you. Sure. Um, my girlfriend Robin, she'll go out and she'll cook the clams on the barbecue. And then we get our crusty French bread out that's been baking in the oven with some garlic on it. Yes. Um, that my girlfriend Cameron usually makes. The sauce really retains that fresh flavor because it hasn't been reduced with the clams so much. But the benefit of cooking it with the clams is then everything it's, is universal. It's, it's, yeah, it's whole. So which, which is right? For practical reason. You should cook the clams in the same pot. You don't have to cook the clams forever. You cook them for a, a, a little bit of time. Just when they start to open, it's done. So your sauce never reduce, stay very vi vibrant, mm -hmm. have a lot of um, flavor, and uh, you don't have the problem of having something like heavy that has over reduced and so on. Yes. So you can see it's like starting to take some color. I'm gonna do something that uh, you inspired me to to do today. Really? Uh, yeah, because I was thinking about your dish and I said, you know what? I'm going to try to um, do, to add something to the dish and, and, and show you a technique at the same time that you may, you may enjoy. When I saw that she was cooking clams, I thought, why not um, bring something else to the dish? Because uh, clams are fantastic with the bread and you have the juice, but you can ma even make it uh, as a main course if you add maybe a piece of fish. When you cook um, cod fish or any fish, if you want to have a nice crust, you have to bring it to a ver very high temperature and the, the oil is going to uh, almost smoke. So we're putting the fish like that. And you see the, 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 the smoke coming out of the pan? Yeah. That's the oil. So right away, we're gonna, we're gonna lower a little bit because we, what we don't want to do is to um, uh, burn the oil. Do you want so, me to throw the clams yeah, in? Yeah, I think, I think yes. I'm gonna put some heat under, yeah. Put them inside. You want some uh, added pepper on top or not? Or? Yes, always pepper. Okay, let's get the... Now, am pepper. I doing a cardinal no-no by stirring no. it around at first? I want it to blanket everything. It's not a cardinal no-no at all. I like doing things that make me nervous. And when I thought I had to do anything to show him in a cooking fashion, I, I, can't, I admit I didn't sleep last night. So, when you saute fish, what you want to make sure is that you have a nice crust, right? So you look at it, you see like the, the brown? Yes. Right here? That's what you're looking for. You and have a very uniform brown um, color, and, and that brings crunch as well, of course. You see that it's starting to open. Oh so now God. you can, if you want, you can toss a little bit in a, in a pan. You have never been on a reality show, have you? No, and let's keep it that way. Is it considered a bad thing to be on a reality show? I mean, in, in, for an actor or in Hollywood? Or it, yes. It, it's not a good yeah. thing. Yeah, now that I'm saying that, I'm going to get in like giant yeah. trouble. But yes. I would prefer to stay off reality TV. Because a lot of it is very um, sensational. I want to share myself with people. I'm very open about my life and, yes. you know, I've always been an open book, but I think there's sort of a boundary. I think it's, it's, very, it's very important to keep your distance in between private life A little and less this, a little more this. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm totally with you. So you, we have a nice crust, as you can see mm -hmm. now. I flipped it once and, and I don't know if you noticed, but I put my hand on top when I did it and I slid the, the spatula underneath and my, my hand was really, um, 
I'm going to put it here for the moment. Was really guiding the fish so it doesn't uh, break into pieces mm -hmm. into the pan. So, in, in your career, you had some some drama and ups and downs, and you overcame the challenges. Yes. And, and uh, when was really a turning point in your career when you said, "Well, I'm I'm done with the drama, and I have the passion, obviously, for being." Uh, an actor and potentially a producer that you became. I was going to say it's that? that exact crossroads. When I was um, about 18, I 18. started my own production company called Flower Film. And you understood all the aspects of production and... I love filmmaking. You I love all the decisions that go into making a film. It and was, directing? Yes, I love directing. It was always my goal. I finally directed my first feature and I've directed a music video and I directed a documentary and I can't wait to do it again. Knowing the passion that she has for acting, I cannot see uh, the roof far away from Hollywood, either way acting or directing uh, movies. So I think she will be able to uh, be the businesswoman that she wants to be and also uh, uh, being a good mom that is her wish, of course. A good director is someone who is just incredibly decisive an indecisive director is a bummer. Because you need direction. Yeah, because it's like everything in life. You don't want to go up to someone and be like, I have this question, and they just kind of go, um, well. Uh. This is the same for my end, for chefs too. Yeah, it's, I hate indecision. It's so unsexy. The, the chef has to take decision. I, I like that. It's, a, it's similar to, to what you're talking about. So at 18, you're starting to Yep, uh, I started uh, produce. to produce. And, and direct. I started learning later. how I could be a director. What kind of director did I want to be? And uh, and then I think life really just sort of took off from there. I'm um, putting some parsley, by the way. That's gorgeous. I had a little bit of parsley, why not? And then we will have the juice, and we will find a spoon somewhere for the juice. So you see, while you were cooking the clams, and we are, we are having a good time and drinking and talking, we cook the fish. So it's not it's not difficult. It's something very very simple. Some of the juice? Yes. OK, we're going to put a lot of juice. So um, that's a turning point in your life. Yes. Uh, and from that day on, you change um, your lifestyle? I really went to school to be a producer. I trained myself. Yes. I studied everything. I created like my own college of how do you produce. I put together writer's lists and found out you know, what type of films I wanted to make. And I started optioning books. And I started meeting with executives that I respected what projects they were making. And I'm like Tracy Flick in election. I'm pulling the buttons at night. I'm ripping the posters off the wall. I've got crazy African music going on in my head. I like studying. So you're a perfectionist. I want to make it happen. So what is the difference in between being controlling and making it happen? It sounds so much better. <laughs> OK, well, you see, for a guy who doesn't speak English, now I get it. <laughs> we're going to go test our food. I mean, let me carry the plates, and uh, we're going we're gonna to move. It smells good. And the, gar uh, the bread, too, with the garlic, it's, it's very nice. You know I've been waiting like a greyhound at the gate to eat this. I'm very excited. So you put it in a, in a juice like that? And, I do. And, and you let it... Um, it's uh, one of my favorite things about the dish. Anything that yeah. is, you know, welcoming to a crusty French bread is so delicious. I'm excited. Let's see. Mm. It's mm. good, huh? Mmm! <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm so glad that you um, approve of the jalapenos in the dish. Too. Yes. I have never tried clams of mussels with jalapeno. There's a subtle, um, subtleness about it, but it's spicy and not too much, and I love it. Some nights, my girlfriends and I will throw in a little more or a little less, depending yeah, of course. on our mood. Of, uh, yes, absolutely. But right now, it's perfect. And what I notice in the back of the bottle, you mentioned that you give a portion of the proceeds to uh, charity. Yes. When I turned about 30, I realized that I, I really wanted to um, broaden my horizons and my awareness, and I wanted to start balancing my life yes. with philanthropy. So I started working with the World Food Program and really uh, working in um, children's education and funding schools. So in America or, or in Africa? In Africa, actually, yes. So I'm, you went to Africa? Yes, for many years, actually. And oh. now I'm building my own school there. You know, if nobody knows, great. If yeah. people know, great. If I can bring awareness or raise some money, wonderful. But I just like to keep my head down and 
learn about what I can do over there. And I think with each charity comes a different appropriateness. So you say each charity you, you're involved with also animals? I, I do love animals. From back in the so, day, I love animals, especially so dogs. So it's about saving dogs? Or I about... love dogs. Do you have any dogs? I have two cats. <laughs> um, no, because I you already do? thought I will be the one who goes outside at midnight with a dog to you go probably in the street will. and pee and, and so I have cats. So animals, children, hunger, yes. those are, are your main focus in terms of women uh, empowerment. Women empowerment. That's very honorable. Everything you do is very inspiring and, oh. and you know it's great. So thank you so much for coming. I enjoy must... the wine. I enjoy your company very much. And uh, now we have a surprise for you. We're going to go see the board. Oh my God. That we dedicate to you, of course. This is in your honor. It's and, beautiful. Uh, it's the recipe and of course, your name and uh, Clem's Montecito. Clem's Montecito. It's your recipe, right? I it mean, so, is. So you have to sign it. I think to stay true to our conversation, I'm gonna go right by the butter. Okay, well, I signed here in that case. Oh, I love the arts. Anyway, <laughs> it was a great pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. We have to cook more often. I just, <laughs> I'm gonna have a hard time leaving here, but I don't mean that to scare you. I have the feeling that today, um, the experience of cooking together um, will stay in our mind. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised that she goes back with her girlfriends and, and friends and decide to cook the clams and surprise her friends by adding uh, what we did today, uh, cooking a piece of fish with it. You just never know when something like some fun dream of yours might be realized. In my case, cooking with someone that I uh, really, really love. So, dream come true. I was actually um, raised vegetarian by my mom. One night I checked into a hotel with my three dogs and I That's had dogs. forgotten their food. So. I said, I'm going to write this wrong and I'm going to order steaks on the menu and sat down on the floor yeah. and I ate an entire steak by myself and I just cut it up and ripped into it. Pharrell Williams here. Hi, I'm Joy Bryant. I'm Eric Repair. I'm Tom Colicchio. I'm Dr. Frank Lippman. The host of On the Table. The host of Across the Board. Host of Artist Talk. Host of Hooked Up. Host of the show, Be Well Week, Be Well Weekend on the Reserve Channel. It's only on Reserve. Did you know that you can follow my show on social media sites like Facebook? Follow us on Twitter. If you're a fan of my show, hit the like button. All of the above. Share me with your friends. Treat yourself. You know, check out a new episode of my show, Hooked Up. And if you want to leave comments, feedback, ideas, whatever, love to hear from you. Leave a comment. And if you don't want to miss the show, be sure to subscribe. The one that's like down here, or is it here? Uh, somewhere down here. Thanks for watching the Reserve channel. Only on YouTube. Please. Throw caution to the wind and ask yourself what rules.